Today I'm making napkins specifically so I can show you how to get a beautiful rolled hand on your serger and the different types of threads we can use to get different effects. So we're going to be working with a variegated thread. It's lots of different colors. And we're going to be working with a woolly nylon, which is a fuzzy little thread. See how thick it looks and it's fuzzy and stretchy. And regular overlocker thread. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is set my machine to three needles. You want to make sure that you take out left needle so that the right needle, which is the one closest to the machine, closest to the loopers, is the one that's left in. Um, and every machine's different. So I'm giving you sort of general directions for most machines. So we're going to go to the searcher and I'll show you what to do next. I'm working with a four thread machine. It has two needles and two loopers. And you know you have a four-thread machine by how many knobs it has, if you have a machine with knobs. If you don't have a knob machine, um, you can look um, if it has just like the, the new ones have vacuum that just suck your threads through for you. So you can look and see how many spindles you have back here to hold threads. Um, they ha there's three thread, four thread, and five thread overlock machines. Mine's a four. And we're only going to be using three of the threads. So I'm not going to be using this farthest left spot. And I'm going to take out this needle. So I'm going to remove it real quick. So I'm going to start by, you can re-thread your whole machine if you want to, but it's easiest to, if your presser foot is up, even if it isn't, you can do this, but it's easiest to put your presser foot up and we're gonna tie on our threads. So I'm literally taking the two threads together and wrapping over, pulling it through. And I'm gonna do that for both of these loopers. And we're gonna tie on, I don't do it for the needle. The needles are like a sewing machine, they're easy to thread. So I don't worry about it. I'm gonna wrap over, pull through. And then I'm going to come back here and grab my tails and just make sure your needle is up and we're just gonna gently pull. Don't yank hard. You're, right now I'm at the tension and if your tension gates are real tight, it can still break the thread or break your knot. But see how the thread just color just changed and now I have dark thread on. So I've got my loopers done. Now we're gonna thread our needle. And right now we're just gonna go for a plain three thread stitch. And you wanna make sure you get into that tension gauge. So I kinda of hold my top thread so it slides through. All right, now we're threaded up. So now I'm just going to um, run the machine for a second to get it stitching and make sure the stitch is right. And it is. So now we're gonna just look at the stitch that it printed, it stitched out. So I'm just grabbing a scrap, look at this, a little scribbly scrap. I'm Everything I'm gonna be sewing today is one layer. I'm not going to be sold, sewing a seam, I'm doing napkins, so I'm doing one layer. So I'm just gonna search off the edge and see what my stitch looks like. And right now, right now it's just making a three thread stitch. So you can see the back looper and the front looper meet at the edge, which is exactly what we want. Here's my needle and it looks great. So that's just a plain three thread stitch. Not very exciting, that's what it is. So now I wanna switch it over to rolled hemming. On my machine I have a little switch right here, there's a little finger and when I pull this back, way back here that finger goes away and that's going to allow the fabric to wrap around, there's two needles in the throat plate and it wraps around that needle. So that's the beginning of making a rolled hem. The second thing is I'm gonna push my knife over so they're not rubbing against each other and I'm going to make my knife, the lower knife, go in. So now it's cutting off less, it's making it narrower. Everything just moved to the left a little bit. And that alone is going to change how it stitches. So I'm gonna stitch again and show you how just that part, without changing tensions or anything else, I haven't shortened my stitch length. So here's the new stitch. So it's still a three thread stitch. It's cupping very slightly to the back and there's the back thread. So if I put these side by side, you can see one's a little narrower. See how it's a little narrower? That's how they look right now. So now we're gonna turn it into a real um, rolled hem. The first thing I'm going to do is all the way over here on the side of my machine, 
this is my length of my stitch, just like at the sewing machine. I'm gonna make it as, get as short as I can, so it goes all the way to 0.8. That's pretty stinking short. And we're gonna serge again. Now all I've done is shorten the stitch length. I haven't changed any tension yet. And you can see it's nice and tight. It's a little bit wavy. Can you see how it kind of waves just a little bit? It gets a little high and a little low. And that's because it's not actually rolling yet. It's rolling a tiny bit in a few spots, but not completely. And here's the back. So a true rolled hem, you want the front thread, your upper looper, to wrap all the way to the back. And the back looper is almost acting like a bobbin. It's gonna get really tight and disappear. So how we do that is we make sure our top one is real loose. So my, that's my blue, my upper looper is very loose, which it is. And then I'm going to tighten up my lower looper. And this may take a little practice. The softer the fabric, the better it's going to roll. So I'm using a little bit of a stiff fabric and we're gonna try again. You should not have to change much with your needle. Watch, I know it's probably hard for you to see, but my tails want to wrap back around because they're, they're stiff. So watch that, that it doesn't wrap back into where you're stitching. All right. Oh, and we are getting there. So here's how it looks now. And here's the back. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it. I may have to take a picture with my phone. Um, the upper, is coming around to the back, but the back isn't quite tight enough. I just need to make it a little tiny bit tighter and it'll be a perfect roll temp. So I'm almost there. Let's tighten this up just a little bit more and we are ready to start. When you're making a napkin, which is what I'm going to do, I'm not starting in my corner. I always start somewhere in the middle of the um, square because I want to wrap my corners. I want my start and stop to be on the same spot. I want it to kind of wrap over itself, sort of like a backstitch would do. You can't backstitch on a serger, so this is where we're gonna start and stop here. And you can see the color of this thread. I had a hard time deciding what color, but I was trying to get just sort of in the aqua, dark bl greeny blue color. So I'm going to lift my foot, and I'm gonna start all the way over here. Now I'm not cutting anything off. I'm just gonna let it glide right next to the knife. And I'm just gonna let it go. One thing about rolled hemming is it's slow because it's taking, the stitches are very short and close together. So that's how it's looking right now. There's the back. Okay. Now I'm approaching the corner and I'm looking down inside here um, to see how close I can get to this corner without going through. So I'm going to I'm going to get my face down in there too because I'm going to be, I'm looking right down in here. I'm watching that. And as I approach that corner, I'm going to leave my needle in. If you have to, use your hand wheel. The needle sunk because I only have one needle. If you have two needles, it doesn't work as well. And I'm just rotating that corner. All right. Can you see I'm just off my fabric right there? I sink my needle. See how the needle goes just off? Now I'm going to rotate it around. There, see now where it starts. And now... And now I have a corner. not having you overlap your corner so that you could have fraying out of all of your edges, because you can sew on and off. Um, that's easy, but you have to go back and like fray check every corner or do something like that, which I think um, looks less professional and you're more likely to have some fraying of your threads. So this way, your corners are wrapped perfectly. Oh, I wish I'd ironed that, look at that. Iron your fabric first. We want it to just be like one stitch. It's about an eighth of an inch from that corner. And rotate. So 
So I've put my variegated thread on there and I've just tied on and now I'm pulling my threads through very carefully. That noise is it going through the um, tension guide and you want to make sure when you pull you get both threads out the other end you see both knots. So I've tied on. Now I'm ready to um, just thread up my needle. Stitch. Make sure it's making a nice stitch. This is how it looks. See the variegation of the colors change? That's how it looks on the back. Fabric. So now I'm just going to do a little tester on it. This is just a scrap of it on the fabric, which I like. I really like this, um, the brown part the best, but the whole thing looks nice with this um, variegated fabric. So I made my mom curtains out of this fabric and there was just a little bit left. So I thought I'll just make her a couple little matching napkins. So I'm just going to slide this under my foot. I cut my napkins exactly the size I needed because I'm just applying a hem to the edge. I don't have to roll under, so I don't need any seam allowance. Also, I don't need to cut anything off other than maybe a hair here and there. So I'm just letting my fabric, you can see it's really not cutting much, just glide along the edge of that knife. If it trims a tiny bit, that's fine. There it is right there, that's the corner. You can see your thread color change right in that corner, but that's it. There's no break there. There's nothing I have to worry about. It's not gonna fray. Um, so that's how you do a little turned corner. It's pretty simple. I'm just gonna keep going around this. And when I get to this edge where I'm wrapping back around, I will show you. I'm ready to, this is where I started and I'm just gonna come back across it. What I want to do is not cut through these threads. So I have to be careful when I'm stitching that I keep it just beside the knife. It can cut off my tails. And I'm just gonna make sure that they touch. I'm looking in that window and once they do, I stop sewing and I'm just gonna pull this to the side so it's out of the way and sew off. And it'll always be a little thicker there because you've got double layer of thread, etc. And my thread color changes too, which is not the most beautiful, but there's my little my little over, there's a corner. So my favorite way to do a napkin is with woolly nylon. So that's what we're going to do next. I'm going to cut this thread and put woolly nylon on it. Now woolly nylon needs like no tension because it's see how thick and fuzzy it is. If you uh, put a lot of tension on it, you'll lose some of that nice thick fuzziness. All right, now I haven't clipped the other thread so I can't just pull through. And you can't pull through if your needle is also um, still attached. So I'm gonna clip my needle thread because I gotta change it anyway. And now it'll pull because the needle's not attached. And I'm just gonna let it run through. All right, and now I'm going to change my needle to burgundy. All right, I have woolly nylon on right here. And I just sewed my sample. Look at how heavy that stitching looks. It's so pretty. I'm gonna just show you, compare that to that. There's nothing wrong with this. This is perfectly fine, but this looks nice. Your commercially made napkins a lot of times will have woolly nylon. You only need it on the upper looper. You can put it upper and lower if you want to. You don't need it in the needle at all. And as a matter of fact, it's really hard to get it in the needle and it doesn't serve any purpose. And for the cost, why bother? Just buy one, put it in your upper looper, match the other two with just regular thread. If you notice, I have almost zero tension on my upper looper and I have pretty high tension on my lower and regular tension on my needle. And it'll be different for every machine and your machine probably will have settings for you, but that's what it looks like. So I'm gonna now get my napkin out. I prefer this. This is actually how I want to finish my napkin. That's how nice it looks. It finishes that edge so well. Look at how pretty. So that makes for a very pretty napkin. This is my preferred method. I like a woolly nylon. One woolly nylon thread on top, regular overlock thread for the needle and the lower looper. And when I say on top, I mean upper looper. And that's it, that's a napkin. So I'm gonna sit here and make all of my napkins, this method, with the woolly nylon. This is the woolly nylon edge. It's very pretty. 
and I'll insert a couple close-ups. So that's the woolly nylon edge as compared to the variegated edge with regular overlock thread. And then I have, this is just plain overlock. And so I'm gonna do a quick um, close-up picture of the three together so you can kind of see the different stitches. All right, so these are the basics for doing a rolled hem. I did it on a napkin because it's just a simple and easy way to uh, demonstrate it, but you can definitely use this in a clothing option like a ballet skirt, a nice full hem. This is the hem, this is the stitch that you would use on your serger if you want to do a lettuce hem. You stretch it as you go, so on a knit or on a bias cut, you can get a lettuce hem using your rolled hem. And again, you can also use this woolly nylon. When I did dance costumes, we did tons of things with this woolly nylon edging and it was great. I even would sometimes stick wire in there as I stitched so that you could actually mold your hem. Crazy, I know, but it's a pretty fun technique. <laughs>